session within a few minutes uh, about a few things that I think will be very, very important to you in, uh, I think, in uh, not careers as, as such, but I think I want to talk for you from the part of entrepreneurship and, uh, and uh, how do you succeed, you know, today. Uh, you know, I had uh, I prepared a lot of things, uh, but uh, but I think I need to uh, to pick a few things that are very that are very important you know, to talk about. Okay, let me talk about the foundation just in a very small. Uh, uh, I was trying to look for a way to to, to, to explain about the foundation. I, I could explain about our foundation the whole day. So, so I think I looked at the, the three things that are very important uh, to us as a foundation, based on our plan for 2018 as a, as a foundation. So under the foundation, we have learn, incubate, and fund. So under learning, we have entrepreneurship, we have uh, business scaling, we have trainings, uh, we have digital skills, uh, learning where we, we, we work with Google in terms of you know, you know, scaling young, young people digitalization and uh, then other programs that follow but basically uh, this is our plan for this year basically we want to we want to reach about we want to reach 36,000 young you know, trained people uh, then uh, when we go to incubation we have uh, under incubation we have digital marketing graphic design pitching programs and business designing and scaling so here we are able to, to help you know startups you know grow and Put them on incubation and help them to uh, to evolve, you know, real products and, and you know. Then on the fund we have a crowdfunding, angel investors, local venture capital. So on the on the fund part, it's where we try to help uh, startups get established and uh, and they're able to to launch out and, and go do business. Uh, I think I can go on the second one. So, so basically, the foundation uh, is, 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 is based on three pillars: uh, learn, incubate, and fund. So we, we help uh, learning, which is which is a little bit uh, conventional, which is not the kind of learning you know you're picking from the university, which is you know another kind of learning. And then we have uh, we have uh, incubation, which is uh, which is about building you know, startups and. Uh, and giving hands-on skills to, 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 the, to the entrepreneurs and then fund, which you know, takes the, the startups into funding. So then we have, we have what we call Ujama, it's, a, it's a, our online community. And our online community covers all these things that you know, members get out of the community, uh, which is, which is you know, free to register online anywhere. And, uh, and it has digital marketing, it has entrepreneurship boot camps, it has digital skills. Business skills training, startup capital, branding, live studio, uh, mentoring, uh, vast networks, and local and international markets. So we help uh, young people under the online community, which which is Ujama, to get exposure to all the things you see on that on that kind of. On the, on the screen. So basically that's what we offer to, to the startups to be able to pick uh, in terms of uh, uh, building young entrepreneurs that join our community. Our target, is, our target is to build a very, very huge community. With, uh, we have a target of building a community of, of millions of young Africans. Uh, last year we were doing digital skills in, in, in 21 African countries. Uh, in partnership with Google, and uh, we've been interacting with a lot of uh, young people across across the African continent, in, uh, and trying to understand how can we build the next generation of businesses. So let's go on the next one. I'm going to be a little bit quicker, you know, uh, in, in order to save time, and uh, I'll talk about the two. You know, I talked about uh, our learning. Why? What makes our learning different? So I'll talk about the, the analytical thinking and the the lateral thinking. Analytical thinking is making assumptions of what the rules are and then uh, disregarding implied rules. So most of us in, uh, most of us in, uh, in Africa, uh, I think the difference, you know, I, I had a lot of people 
who used to ask me that, you know, why is it that for us in Africa we cannot build startups or businesses that can be able to thrive and break through in, in, and, 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 you know, and become global brands? But the only issue why we can't do that is based on the two things that you get. It. So, so, so the analytical thinking represents the, the left brain and the lateral thinking represents the right brain. So for us, most of all our time we build our left brain. You understand? So, so, so we spend most of all our years in analyzing things. You know, we understand very well uh, things. So, so we live our life on things. We, we put we put a lot of things into our heads, and, and when the time comes to go to replicate them, to do them physically. You cannot transfer that into the physical uh, things. You understand? Because most of the time is that our brains have been trained and have been shaped to crap, to keep things, to remember things. And uh, it has been one of the biggest challenges that I have found in most of either either you go to work with people. Uh, I work with a team of about average at any given time of about 35 to 40 young people. But the issue is that you get a lot of people come out of universities and they went to school and, uh, and they have all the, the qualifications that you feel and when you look at their qualifications you're like, yes, I got these guys, you understand. But the moment you get into implementation, they're totally different because they at, at, at the end of the day they literally do not understand anything about implementation how to make things happen. So they spend most of their time building their left brain. The left brain gives you routine. It gives you routine. I wake up in the morning, I wake up at 8, 8.30, I have to dress like this, I have to eat like this, I have to get out at this time, and I have to do this, and I have to do this, and I go to sleep. So the brain learns, your left brain learns to, to live on a systematic kind of life. Then the right brain on the other side is totally opposite. So it begins teaching you how to question life. So it's a, it's a wide brain. So it begins to question, why do I eat like this? Why am I supposed to put on, uh, why am I supposed to put on a suit? Or why am I supposed to put on a t-shirt? Is there any reason behind what I'm trying to do? So the, the right brain, so most of all the people that can build successful businesses, build successful businesses because their right brain is active. Because they question environment, they question life, they question things in the community, they, and, and, and most of the times are, are seen as the, the rebels, you understand? Not the rebels in terms of politics, but I'm talking about the, the rebels in terms of, you know, trying to find their own way in, in, in the life that they try to live. So most of the times is that we don't get an opportunity to question life. You understand? You know, because, because we understand that one plus one equals two. So I can't have one plus one equals four minus two. You understand? And if I write one plus one equals four minus two, I'll fail in the exam. You understand? Because it is automatically, automatically it has to be one plus one equals two. So we begin moving in life and the kind of things we learn when we go in the actual world to do them, it is totally different. That's why you know you leave university and you go to work in a good corporation and they will tell you they need, they need you to have three years experience. And you're like, man, where, where am I going to get three years experience? You know, I've spent all my life in school. What do you want me to get? Three years experience. But, but three years experience becomes more valuable than the 20 something years of school. Because the three years has given you another dimension of understanding. You get it? So, so uh, and, and it was so fascinating to me, you know, when I started out in business, you know. When I started out in business, it was very fascinating because I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to challenge a lot of stuff. And, and, uh, and, and I'm a very, very free-spirited kind of person, you know. I don't care how, how, how I show up, either I put on shorts or I put on a long trousers. It is not none of my business. 
because I have understood the values that I have in life that are greater than how I show up to you. And I've come to learn that most of all the, the successful people, you know, you know, I, I used to go to meetings when I started and, uh, and uh, for me it is very, very hard to take me in a business, you know, if you want to do business with me because I'll profile you from the time you walk in and if, by the time you start talking to me, I'll understand if I'll do business with you or not. In just the next five, three minutes, I'll understand you. I'll understand how you dress, I'll understand how you speak, I'll understand so many things. I will start questioning so many things around because most of the times is that we want to create an image of who we are, not the character of who we are. You understand? And and it has been a very and it is a very very huge problem for almost every like like in Uganda it's too big. You know, I'm, I'm very I'm privileged. I've been to so many other African countries. You know, most of them. You know. And I've tried to look at different kind of environment and how people live and how people understand things. So in Uganda, it is quite very impossible to, 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 to question things. You know? To question things. There is no one who stops you, but the culture and the behavior pattern cannot give you the ability to do it. So that's why you can't find someone here who is running, someone here who will build it at the next Google. Someone who will build the next Facebook. You, you can't find them. Because their mind cannot stretch to that level. That level of, of a mind is, is way too beyond the critical, the analytical thinking. You know, because I used to tell people that I don't want to employ someone in my company and I'm just employing you and, and you're more like a, you know, a moving encyclopedia, you get it? So like, you, you, you just have, you've crammed so many things in your head. I want to employ people that when I tell you that we can go through that wall, you will tell me, yes, I'm ready to go through the wall. And then you will ask me that, how do we go through the wall? You understand? I don't want to employ people who will tell me, you want the things you're explaining to me, I can buy a book of 50,000. And I go home and I refer to the book. So you must have something that is deeper than the book. You get the point? So it means that we must become leaders that are, we must become natural thinkers. We must be thinkers, we must be thinkers that question life and what are the values that we must build to make sure that we can be able to create sustainable businesses or able to run companies powerfully. I was telling, we can go to the next part before I, I run out of time. So I, I put some few pointers here that I can be able to pick from. So some of the things you won't understand, but it will give me a guideline. Uh, the world in 2030, so it is very, very important that the next generation right now will begin to understand what is the world going to be in 2030. It is so amazing, you know, that you walk in such a conference uh, with such young people and, uh, and, 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 and you will see everyone just carrying a book and a pen. automatically it shows you that something is already wrong. That we are creating a generation for tomorrow, but yet they are leaving 20 years behind. Into, into how they express themselves, how they, they, they handle information. I'm being frank with you, because I want to be frank with you to help you for something. So that you can be able to pick something, because the things I'm telling you, no one is going to tell them to you. I, I believe you, no one is going to tell you these things. Whoever they will speak to you about futuristic things, but they will not speak to you about the real factual things. Because I am telling you the things because I've lived them and, and, and I live them every single day. You get into a space like this and you find guys who are at a university level and everyone is having a notepad and a book and a pen and, 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 and you can't see even anyone owning an iPad. You can't, that even the information people are being, is being shared to them, no one can refer it to online in a second to understand what's the value and, and either what the guy is saying is right or wrong. <laughs> you get it? Because their minds have stopped to question their ability to exist. You understand? Because there is a difference between living and existing. So most of us Africans, we exist. 
we exist and we die. So, so, so you wake up in the morning, you live in the routine every single day. So we become like trees, you get it? Yeah? So you, you, you walk every day, then you give, you give, you give birth to, to, to a bunch of kids and then, but then you die out and then the kids take over and they fight for a plot of land and then also then go and other things and we leave and another generation comes and all go like that. But people in so many other parts of the world are leaving. Because when you leave, it means that you have to mass produce yourself. You must produce yourself. It means that, you know, for me I've mass produced myself in so many other young people that think like me, look like me, dress like me, because you, as a human being, you must live through other people. So it means that you, either you work in a corporation or whatever you're trying to do, you must make sure that you want to live through other people. You want to have a significance in life. So, so it, we are living in a compressed time. What do I mean with a compressed time? You know, every time you live in a compressed time, there's a necessity for speed. We are living in a compressed time, you know, uh, when you read the Bible or the Quran or whatever kind of you're reading, you know, I'm trying to refer to history, you know, or either Abraham or Moses, whatever kind of religion you're in and you read through, you know, people live for a thousand years, people live for a hundred years, you know, but today people are living for 45 years. So it means that people are getting married at 18 years. So it means that if you are thinking that you need 10 years to build a company. You are, you, you are in trouble. Because people are building overnight companies that are becoming global brands. Airbnb is about three years old. But it has made their CEOs the, one of, among the top billionaires in the world in a period of three years. I talked last time when we were on the other side that Google has been in existence for 15 years. But it's the world's most valuable company. But most of you don't even know what Google sells. You wake up every day, you go, you search, you go in the search engine, you put in, you take whatever you want to search online, but it is the world's most valuable company. Bigger than companies that are, bigger than companies that, bigger than Coca-Cola, bigger than companies that are employing millions of workers. Why? Because the business has already shifted. And, 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 and I keep hearing people say, you know, we are looking for jobs from the government. We are looking for jobs. We are trying. There is no more jobs. Jobs are not there. And by the next five years, you, go, you guys go to look for jobs, you are already in trouble. You must be trained to create things. Because five years from now, the companies you are seeking jobs from every single day, they are narrowing their gap because the technology is, is shifting so quick. You know, today the biggest bank in Uganda, uh, when it comes to numbers, is MTN. Yes, but MTN is not a bank. But mobile money for MTN, more, MTN has more users who bank money than any bank that is living. The biggest global tra transport company is Uber, but Uber does not own a car. You have your own car. And then it is your own car that pays for them. Because, it, because the business has shifted. Business right now is into, is into information. It's into how people can leverage on information that they create and how it can be sustainable for them. So, so it means that when you're living in a compressed time, it is very, very necessary for you to work with speed. It means that you must be thinking 10 times faster than anyone. In the ideas you create, and I put a few things here. You know, there's a difference, you know. Uh, you know, free thinkers, it, it, it was very, very crazy. The characteristics of free thinkers, most of the people who have been thinking uh, differently, that have led the, the global companies, talk about it, Microsoft or Bill Gates or, 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 uh, or Steve Jobs or any of these guys, most of them, during their era, they dropped out of school. All of them. But then the issue, but then the difference is that they dropped out of school, but then school was a, a very, very huge part of their existence when they built the companies. By the time they were in their 35, 40, they were the guys who read more than anyone who's reading. They, those guys read about 10 books a day. <laughs> you understand? 
So, 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 because there was, there was a particular knowledge they were seeking when they were 19, 18, and all of them started their startups when they were about 15, 16, 17 years. That's when they started the startups. You know, by 35, that's when their startups became the global brands that are standing to them. You understand? So then there's a difference between street smart and book smart. Because street smart people, that's why you see that when you come into, even in Uganda, you know, when you, when you read the news and other things, the people who are doing the biggest things did, did not even go to school. Because when people who went to school, they leave school, they think school was attaining, was the greatest achievement they have to make. Yet, if they hadn't even started moving, it is 23% of what can make you successful. So then they get out and they are all burnt out because they were not thinking, they were not thinking exponentially. They were, not, they were, just, they were just looking at things for now. You know, you, know, you know, achieve it and you go, you, you graduate and you dance in the village with all the community and in the, in, in the, in the banana plantation and people sweat and other things and then from there people cannot even recreate their next one. And this happens, and this happens in Africa, everywhere. And uh, then you look at, there's, a, there's creativity, productivity and availability. You know, people who start stuff must be creative. They work from the, pro, the, the, the creativity part. Then there is a second phase which is productivity because creativity creates the productivity. So creative people are the ones that create the productive people. Productive people are people who get to school, who study, who finish school and, and they're very, they begin to productively produce things. You get it? Because they are leaders move, leaders move. Me, I'm a leader, leaders move. Uh, then, then, then when you get to people who are productive into companies are for regimentation. So they begin to, to regiment, they create things in the space and they manage them and they retain them, you understand? But then the biggest problem we have mostly in Africa is that the educated people in Africa are in a viability space. They're only paid because they are viable. They're not paid because they were productive. So they get jobs, they go to jobs and you spend all, the, all your time on, at work just doing nothing either on Facebook or sending their selfies and, and they have spent all their time but they don't, when you ask them to give you the productive part they gave a, a corporation within a year, they can't show for them. Then, then we have production, I will not talk about these other things, the statistics are because of the time. Eh? And uh, you can go on another one. I'm trying to save time for you. So, so this is what happens with technology and innovation, you know? We had a computer, a computer which moved, someone has had to disruptively disrupt a computer. <laughs> you get it? Then someone had to think of an iPad which operates as a computer but, but takes away the, 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 the work of a, a keyboard and a, and a CPU and a huge thing so you don't need a desk or something so you can get an iPad and you have a full computer. But then somewhere also there, another disruptor came I was just talking about two phases of disruption, but then there are the bad one, where now you get a mobile phone, and the mobile phone is still the computer. Actually, now the, the, the disruptive part we are in is that the mobile phone has become all these things you see here. From the old computer which came to that, from the, from the old camera which came from that to that one, or from the cassette which went to that, all these things have gone into one thing, which is a mobile phone. So it means that right now a mobile phone is as much valuable as life. Actually, your, your mobile phone is your playground. You can become anything in a mobile phone. Yes, because there are more than, than 1.5 billion people at every given second on a mobile phone. But you will find all the Ugandans when you go on Facebook and other things that these girls have, the things they post and the things they do, it is so sad. It is so sad. For me, the biggest problem and the reason why I started the foundation was for one thing, was, was not to look for money. I started the foundation because the foundation, most of the work we do is free. We don't charge money for it. You understand? But, uh, I started the foundation because I had the pain of saying, man, where are we going to be 20 years from now? You know, people go, someone goes to do a wedding and, and the whole community gathers together and people raise a hundred million to do the wedding. But they do not even, the people who are doing the wedding do not even own a car for two million. 
they do not even have a job. But they do a wedding for, for, for 100 million. Because, I, and you're like, which kind of world are we living in today? And those are the leaders, they will tell you that you're the leaders of tomorrow. There is no tomorrow, my friend, that you're going to lead people. It is not there. I'm being frank with you. The tomorrow is not there. You've already lived in your time. You understand? Let's go to another one. I won't explain this. It will take me a lot of time. Let me go to the last one. We'll just talk about this. First take me to the... Yes, that one. So this is where we all find the problem. Uh, I keep telling people, a society cannot develop unless people's the behavior pattern has shifted for people. I'm tired of going to people and trying to, to inspire them and inspire them for nothing. Because even when you will inspire them, either they've heard your story or not, it won't do anything to them. Because they do not have the basics that build them to succeed. You understand? Uh, when, when, when I was sharing with someone I work with in the foundation, I, I have a, a small team of my people here, and I was sharing, and, and, uh, and, and the issue, and, and I was talking about, we were talking about one thing that the biggest problem of us now is not because we can't start things. No. Uganda, I, I keep reading in the news that everywhere Uganda, we are number one in, in, the, in the most entrepreneurial country. But it is trash. You can't be number one when you've never built a startup which has been even traded on the stock market, which has even ever made a hundred million dollars. What are you talking about? You know, talk about Nigeria, talk about, they don't have to create a thousand startups. They have to create five, right? Yes, because all of you here don't need to start a business. You need two people who start a business that employs all of you. And when all of you can own, can own shares, can build the startups together. But because we have a very, very wrong kind of philosophy that has made us fail at every level. And it is happening so much, uh, mostly in Uganda. Uganda is very sad. The, the situation is, in Uganda is very terrible. When it comes to business, when it comes to the future of young people, it is very terrible. That's why the young people are going into, uh, they're becoming artists, they're becoming uh, uh, politicians, because they're trying to find life in the things they live in. We, are not, we don't export Ugandans to go to Europe to work in NASA. We don't export Ugandans to go to Europe, you know, to, to become senators. We export Ugandans to go to Europe to clean toilets, to clean, to, to cook food for people. But you find a guy who has a, a, a degree, who has what, and you find them owning. Now, what? how can you leave the university to go to ownership? For real? How do you spend all your years in the university to go in Chikubu and own a shop? And go sell clothes. And now you see those ones and they put them up and they say, these are the successful Ugandans. And they're doing an amazing thing. Because we are lost. Because there's what we call, there's what we call a mental model. So I look at a mental model because I told you that behavior, behavior are called. We are not taught behaviors. Either you're a kid, either you're grown up, behaviors are called. It is in the environment you live in that you catch the behaviors in that environment and you become the environment you're in. You understand? So, for example, let me give an example. If you live today and you start living in Colorado right now, and you shift, you start living in Colorado. In the next five years, you, you, the way you think and you do things will be for Colorado. Because you will not find a taxi. So it will require you, for the fact that you bless yourself in Colorado, you will need to start thinking of getting a car. Because the environment, the shift in your environment is detecting for that. It needs you to do that. It requires you to do that. Because otherwise, either you'll be hiring a special hire to take you to Colorado. So it means that because, because money, money uh, poverty, poverty is mismanagement of resources. It, there is nothing else. It, poverty is not, is not a mental disease, it's not anything. It's mismanagement of resources. You mismanage the resources, your skills, your ability, your everything that you have with you. But this is what happens. Money, money which is denomination. Money, money is in denominations, isn't it? You have 1,000, you have 2,000, you have 5, you have 6, you, you have 10, you have something. So when you go to Kololo, your denomination value changes. Why, you, why people are rich is because your network has shifted. You get it? You understand? For me, for me, my network shifted long time. You get it? 
But it doesn't shift because you went to make money. But the environment you get in shifts your network. You know, you know, I stopped thinking, you know, so many times people I work with know this. Like I keep miss I, I keep even miss I keep even confusing shillings to dollars. Because at any given time for me as a person, I seek shillings less than I seek dollars. But it, it is created in the mind and how you perceive your life. So mental models is what shapes people into how they think based on the environment they're in. So the, I'm going to give you a small characteristics of people who live in poverty. And if they can't, and if the model does not shift for them, they can't get better. It doesn't matter how many degrees you get. Yes, you'll, stay, you'll, you'll have 10 degrees. You'll have masters and PhDs, but you'll stay as broke as, as any. Very simple. Yeah, because I'm trying to liberate some young people so that tomorrow they know they can go with purpose to do the rightful things to People in poverty live on entertainment. The moment you get in a place where people live who are poor, the first thing you will see is, is entertainment. <laughs> yes, yes. Even if you know like like when I live, when I if I drive from here and I go to Bice, in the next 10 minutes, if I've parked a car there. I will see more than 10 trucks who are passing advertising. Hey, 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 like trucks will be passing every single minute. Bar, uh, 24 bars, something bar. This, every bar has an event at any given time. Because poor people seek, they, they seek a place of rest. Because, because their minds are very weak. So you want, to, you want something that can stimulate your brain. Can keep you thinking. I have never gone. I've never gone to a club in the last seven, eight, ten years. I don't even know how they look like. Yeah, I don't know how they look. Like. I'm being funny. I don't know because I do not have that time. Because because I rather I I will have to watch you in the club and I find what to sell to. Yes, I'm only preparing. I'm, I'm only preparing. Well, from when you come from the club, what do I need to offer you? So the first step, the first thing is that people who live in poverty thrive on entertainment anywhere globally. If you go to, to United States and places where all the poor people are, the blacks and everything, you will see cars passing with music, doom, 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 like everywhere, like you know, because entertainment is is best in in, in communities of poor people. Uh, audience time. People in people in classes in poor classes work for agency. So when you come today and you tell them that, you know, I have a plan, I want us to run a business for the next 10 years, they're like, ah, uh -huh. 10 years I don't even think if I'll be there. But when the 10 years are gone, you will find them in 10 years still looking for the business of now. You know, I used to go to my grandfather and he used to tell us, get a hole, can you plant a tree for, for, for Jack for tea? And I asked, the fruit takes how long? And he said, five years and I have, I can't use my job. But you know, but you know, I have grown and I go back and the jackfruit that my grandfather put there, I'm eating on it. And I say, what if at that time I just planted 20 trees of jackfruit? I would have a business. But I mismanaged the resource at that time. So number two, agency. People in poverty have agency. Number, number three, people in agency is about clothing. They love clothing, they love to be, they, they, they love to spend all their resources in, 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 in dressing up and other things. I had some pictures, I wanted to show some pictures. I don't know if you have them. I wanted to show some pictures, they were, you don't have them. I wanted to show some pictures, but I keep seeing them online anyway. You know, if I put a picture here of, of Warren, uh, Warren Buffett, of, of Zuckerberg, of, of, of uh, of, of Jeff uh, Bezos, if I put their pictures here and you see how those guys dress, actually they will not even dress for more than a hundred dollars in everything they have. Oh my goodness, go in a place of poor people. <laughs> Jesus. You know, like when you walk in there, someone will buy a shoe for a million shares. Yes. For million change. Go in the black community. You know when you see videos of, of guys in the States or, or, or Jay-Z's or who, when you see their videos you think they're the most richest people in America. But yet they're the most broke people in America. 
But the cars they, they show up, the dresses they put on, the things they put on, because Steve Jobs once said that material possession often clutters life more than it enriches it. He's my greatest, he's the guy, most of my lifestyle, I picked it from Steve Jobs. When he died, his book was the most valuable book I have ever bought in my life. It's changed my life. When Steve Jobs died, I bought his book. I read his book like every single day, his biography from morning till evening, every night. And I'm sitting down, I'm sitting on the bed, I'm sitting on the, on, on the, in the kitchen, and I was reading the book every day because the, that man, he was the greatest innovator of our time. Everything you see from a mobile phone to a computer to everything came from his head. But he used to say that material possession often clutters life more than it enriches it. If you seek, most of us in Africa will live for material possession. That's why you vote the people, you look at the people who go in the parliament and you're like, man, where are we going tomorrow? Because, because they work all their life to go in parliament to drive the land. Not to represent your ideas. No. Because the guy has grown in a very poor environment. So the, the behavior in him dictates for how he leads the life. So when he gets in a place of power, he wants to misuse everything that is on his table. He will eat, he will go for a contract and he will eat four billion and he pays 200 million for a contract. But they have shared five billion. No, I'm telling you real stuff. You know? We look at debt. You know, people in people in, 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 in poverty classes about debt because they borrow so much. They live on a debt cycle. But their debt cycle is different. People in the wealth class borrow. But their art of borrowing is different from the people in the, in the, in the I, can't, I don't have time to explain it to that. Transportation is about uh, whatever, you know, broken cars and all stuff. I want to pick something one here to talk about and summarize. Uh, uh, criminal, criminal justice system. So, so, so uh, most people from poor class, they end up in prison, they end up in what? So, so they thrive on that. You know, so, so people, it doesn't take them a minute to lose life. So life can be lost in a second. So life is not a precious thing. You know, you can be here today and when you start, when you get into an economy and you see a lot of things, you realize that you are as poor as nothing. You understand? Uh, let, let me talk about chem chemical dependency. You know, most of young people spend all their time in drugs and everything because they want to, they, they, their brains are too weak, they must sustain them. You understand? Uh, then, then, then housing is about renting, so all the years, so that's why you see Uganda, we are very, very poor. Not for anything. Because we are very poor, because literally uh, about 70% of the people would rent. Go to rent. Houses. And, and you go to a house, how do you sincerely go to a house to rent a house and they tell you, pay this month and pay six months again? What is that? You know? Even in Europe, you're supposed to, you can even rent for the two days I want to stay. Because that's what I want. So someone, a young guy like you leaves university and goes to rent a house and you need to first raise yourself six million to stay in a house which is not giving you any profit. So these are characteristics of, uh, of a poverty class. They are mental models. So, so let me talk about food. Food is the most key important thing when it comes to mental models. Because it, it's everything in your society thrives on it. I'm going to break down the three classes. Pe people in poverty class, food is quantity. <laughs> food, food is quantity. You know the things I'm talking to you. You know, you know, you know. It is very amazing. The kind of things I'm talking to you are very, very, very simple. But actually, they are the only things you need. Yes, the kind of things I'm talking to you are very, very simple. But actually, they are the only things you need to succeed. Only. I'm telling you because I'm a live example to you. Food is about quantity in poor class. So you go to a home, you know, I, I, we used to do a research when I was working with an American organization like, like five years ago. And you know, America was built on this model I'm talking to you, the mental model of poverty. And, uh, and uh, that's how they managed to create societies that could thrive and build successful people. But you know, we're doing the research and we, we meet a lot of communities and it's so amazing and you could find people. I was in Zimbabwe and, and we were looking at this model and in different places and, uh, and you go to a village and someone in Zimbabwe in a village is as rich as someone in Kampala who lives in Kolo. I don't mean rich in money because money is not what makes people rich. No. 
It's a mental. It's a mental state. Success is just a mental state. And you could go to a village and you meet people and you meet this, these women. They live in a very small hatched house. But that small hatched house is extremely clean. They show up on table to eat food and they have vegetables, they have little portion, they have little, little, little small meat. And, they, 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 and, and the way they present themselves in the heart. And you're walking with a guy and the guy tells you that these guys, if they can realize, if they can only, if only give them one opportunity. If you give them $5,000 in the next 10 years, they're successful. Because in that environment, they're already successful. So, so it doesn't matter how much money you seek. It is how the principles and the character that you, you get from the environment you're in. So people in poor class, food is about quantity. So you'll go to a house and people have a huge plate of posho and it's here like the beans are, have packed everything. And, and now Uganda, so it shows you the culture of Uganda. People go in those things, uh, goat's meat, and, and they bring you a whole tray and, and people are on two, uh, they're sitting two on the plate and they're taking selfies. And, you know, because the poverty class takes you back. <laughs> Jesus on his crucifixion, he told his disciples that, remember me of this. Food was the only most valuable thing that he knew that they could ever remember him. <laughs> yes. And, and, every, and, and it is very, very important for the young people who want to generate character within their life. You have to understand food is the least of things you live for. Yes, I'm telling you things of success. Leave the other things if you're trying to keep finding in the books. The ten steps to get, the ten steps to make money, and then they tell you when you walk on one leg, then you do like this, then you get money. All those things don't work. Yeah, money is a life of principle and character. Because if you can, if you can manage food, you can manage anything in your life. Yes, very simple. As simple as it is, if you can manage life, it, because life, because food is is an internal appetite. I've, I've gone to parties and I find people, a guy coming, driving a, a, a Range Rover, and they go on the line to pick buffet, and he's fighting with people on the line. <laughs> but he's driving a car when he has fuel, when he can put fuel of 100,000, meaning that he can afford to eat the food on the table. But the issue is not because it, it's, it's about the food, it's about the, it, it, it's about the natural appetite he carries as a person. So it means that when, so, so when you find poor people, if poor people, when the guy gets salary today, the next morning, and they have eaten all the money in the next four minutes. <laughs> because it is an internal character of responsibility that we have. So when you take a guy who fights for a plate of food on, on, a, on, on a buffet, and you take him to the parliament, he will eat everything you have. <laughs> yes. I don't, okay, for me, I don't go to parties, I don't go to parties, I don't go to anything, I don't know how they look like. You get it? For me to go to someone's event or a birthday or something, man, the kind of, the kind of impact you have in my life is beyond. Yes. People in the middle class, let's run fast. People in the middle class, people in middle class food is about quality. So when you want to start seeing that people are migrating to a middle class, when you go to their home, it doesn't matter either they live in a, in a one room or something, they will go pick a, a banana, pick a vegetable, pick a fruit. They, they don't have to eat. In Uganda, we believe that meat and chicken is, is, is food. You know, like, those are, that is the highest stature of life. So we even have a day of Christmas or Eid when people have to just buy chicken. You get it? So you can have as much chicken, but because in our mind the colonial rule has positioned our minds to think with. So, so, so people in the middle class, when people are migrating, the first thing you want to migrate to, to, to become a middle class person. So that you can start thinking as a leader, as an entrepreneur, first has to be full. And I'm being frank with you on that. Because when you do that, you're going to understand the values of life. So people see, so people in the middle class, food is about quality. 
So they sit with their kids. So when they teach kids to eat on everything, kids grow up with a perspective of understanding that life has so many options it offers them. People who grow up from poor classes, life is about surviving. Because the first plague they saw, because food is the most valuable thing to every child. Every, so they grew up knowing that they would have to sit from the plate and the kids with huge stomachs and they would fight for a plate of food and someone would want to kill a, a, a brother. So when they grow up, their mentality of thinking has been shaped. So for them, they, they live for survival. So either the, either the guy becomes a general manager, either the guy becomes a CEO, either the guy becomes who, that's who they have become. And the appetite that they desire inside will always interject, will, will always disrupt all the power they have. That same appetite will be in everything else in life. That, that comes, comes from the plate. So, so people, people in middle class start teaching young people to have the skills to choose. They start understanding that I can pick. I have a choice to pick. So I can pick a mango and I live an orange. So it means that because they begin growing with this life knowing that I can choose something and I give something for someone else. Then people in the world class, how do world class view people? Food. People in the world class, food is about presentation. So when you walk to Serena, and you go to have lunch in Serena, you don't, people who go to eat lunch in Serena at 150,000 or 112,000 or 120,000, they don't eat food, they eat presentation. So that's why you go to top hotels, when you go to Burj Khalifa or anywhere across the globe and you sit in a, in a top class, there's guys who watch TV, there's Chef Ramsey. Chef Ramsey, they will carry him when he's going to cook in Dubai or Singapore for just one hour and the plate costs $25,000 for a person who sits on the table. And they'll give you a plate when it has just a small drop of food and some two flowers and, and the, and the $25,000 is done. Because the people in that class are not seeking food. They're seeking presentation because their life has given them value. And when kids who grow in that class, they have appreciation for life. They have, they, have, they have gratitude. They understand that I am not here by myself, but I have, I have a hand in someone else's life to make it better. You understand? So, that's why we are creating very, very fake companies in Africa. Very, very fake companies. Because companies are for our own survival. So you make a company to make yourself rich, your kids rich, and yourself rich, and you build a huge flat in slum, and, and almost every house next to you is about to break. And, in the, and when you're about 50, someone shoots you, just, just grabs a stone and hits your head and you die, because that's how we live in Africa. Yes, because everyone, even in your family, everyone, your neighbors, your sisters, your cousins, everyone is planning to see when you die to take what you have. Because you have no impact whatsoever beyond yourself. For me, it is my very, very, it is a cry to young people like you who are going to be the leaders of tomorrow that you must understand that if we are going to build a better Africa, we must change, we must change the conversation. The narrative must change. We must understand that whatever you are planning to do when you leave the university, to go either in your leadership in the university, how, how do you advance humanity? Bill Gates, by the time he dies, he said he would have given 82% of all his wealth. 82% he would have given it to the world, not to his kids. But for, from the time he announced that and started Bill and Melinda Gates, he's still the richest person. You know, a few things changed. Today becomes uh, now 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 this Jeff who has become a very very huge player now becoming the world's richest man, the one of Amazon. And uh, and uh, but but there is no difference between the three of them. Warren Buffett is about ninety something years, and Warren Buffett had to give ninety percent of all his wealth to Bill Gates. And they asked him, why did you give money to Bill Gates? He said, because he doesn't need it. That's why I gave it to him. Because I gave it to him because he would have a responsibility to give it. Me, I don't know who to give it. 
Yeah, but it does hate my money. Yes. But most of you, you spend all your life seeking things you think you're seeking, but you're in trouble. You are just seeking nothing. After you get a house and you get a car, what next? Yes. Yes. And that's why we are having so many young leaders dying in Africa. We die so young. We don't have mentors who can mentor the next generation. Because the people die so young. That's why I was so much, uh, all the things have been so much inspired by Africans who are great. Tony Enamulu, Stride Masiwa. Stride Masiwa gives more than about more than $50 million to Zimbabwe in terms of education. One single man is not a government. Tony Enamulu gives a hundred million US dollars per annum before anything else he does. And he gives it into entrepreneurship. Every year he builds 2,000 startups. So most of you, that's why your dreams can never be big. They cannot mount to anything. Even when you go to an operation, you die in there just like someone who came and lived. Because your impact was not valuable to where you stay. So to me, it is very important that we build the next generation of young people who are accountable to the future. Because there's, a, there's an Indian saying, Court which says that you know we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. We are on we are responsible to the children we have tomorrow. And it is our responsibility to make sure that the plans and the art and the ideas we develop are for that generation. But today you ask yourself that where are you going? I meet a lot of young people bring me ideas of the company they want you to fund, they want you to do, and and, and man you want to cry. It is so sad. You, I see a lot of competitions in, in what and people are showcasing the Porsche or the packed in a different bag. Like, like because people can't think. People can't think because the, 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 the only idea of success is in the things they know. It was so hard for me five years to talk about a hundred million Ugandan share. When I started going to places and meeting people, I started talking about a billion. When I started talking about a billion, I started talking about a million. When I started talking about a million dollars, I started to sit with people of a million dollars. From sitting with the people of a million dollars, I started signing on a contract of a million dollars. Because it takes you, you have your value, but you cannot think like that unless your vision can reach a million people. So why, why do you want why do you want a hundred million shillings when when even when even when your dream you can only sustain people for two million shillings? And you want a hundred million. Things don't happen like that. So for me, my only issue, I won't go into the next model of the business of, of the top class. There is no time for that. Yeah. You know, for me, it is very, very important to you guys, and I want to tell you that. You know, uh, we have worked so I have a team that works so hard. I have it. I push my team so much to think beyond anything. We don't see Africa. We, we, we have surpassed our ideas, surpassed Uganda, and what Uganda is doing long time. We are thinking of how do we influence how do we influence Africa? What do we do for Africa? What does Africa need tomorrow to, 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 to grow? That's what we are thinking. So it means that we must be able also to attract resources in that level. But you, you have to first be in that level. So uh, I will not break other whatever, I will not break other models. There are so many models, but, but every community that is going to succeed, people must have to first change how they live and how they, think, they, they, they see things. We are having this very, very, very huge problem and it's happening across Africa and it is mind-blowing. And mostly for Uganda, it is too worse. That's why there is a lot of uh, unemployment, a lot of what, even when you employ people, you don't know what they're going to do. You employ the guy today, you employ the guy today, tomorrow wants to do the company as yours. In the next two days. Yeah, because, because, because that's how, you know, but, but, the, but yet you don't blame this generation because this generation is young people. The generation we are in, you, you want to have fulfillment. But that means that we must be able to build startups, to, to run, to work in companies that give us fulfillment beyond a job. Beyond a job. When you walk into Uganda, it is so hard to read somewhere and you find a philanthropist, a, a, philanthropist, a, a local philanthropist who can give five billion and the projects. Yes, and, and that's the first stage of poverty. That's why you understand, because there, there is no equal distribution of resources. Yes, that's because 
because America has about 600 and something, 30 something, you know, uh, billionaires, 600 and 30 something, you know. But they have about, they have about 15 million, 15 million millionaires. You understand? But yet China, China has surpassed the United States in billionaires, but yet China does, is not creating millionaires. You know? Because that, that's why they cannot be superpowers. Because the redistribution of resources is not available. Because it becomes a, a small chain of some people who become very wealthy and others stay on the ground. So if we want to create a successful Africa, from you, from me, from everyone who is here, we must be able to make sure that our ideas can transform lives. When I was in the conference the other time, I told people that your idea has to make meaning. I told them Apple wanted to democratize com computers. Their idea was not to make money. They wanted to give an advantage to everyone to use a computer. And along doing that, they made so much money that anyone has ever made. Google wanted to democratize information. They wanted everyone to have access to the foundation. And for the fact that they wanted everyone to access information, they, become, they became billionaires. Amazon today is the, is the world's richest man. Amazon wanted to make sure that everyone across the globe you can buy something online. We're having very young people who are coming up. But my worry is that the young people who are coming up to do ideas have never even gone to school. But the guys who are going to school cannot even devote anything. But their mind can only think about doing a show. When they leave university, they say, you ask them, what are you going to do now? Yes, you know, I was talking to my father, I was talking to my mother now, they are getting me some money, they are going to buy some clothes, and I'm going to have a shop in, 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 in Chicago or something, whatever building. You get it? But and, and because, and it is so sad, so we are having leaders who are leading you in the generation whose ideas are very sick. Because the people you who have gone to school, who have understood, you cannot combine the two. You cannot use your analytical thinking with, you and, and, and with your lateral thinking. So you need to develop because analytical thinking cannot make you succeed. You will analyze things so much and fear them so much. Yes, that's why the billionaires we have in Uganda, the guy just walks in Yes. Because he had no fear, because he didn't know. He had, because he, the world was unknown to him. He didn't know, you didn't, but now you'll sit down, you start doing your cash flow, you project the next 20 years, and when you look through, you say, I'm not making any profit. This is not a business. <laughs> because people who create ideas, they, they have to have, they have to think, they have to have a mind that questions things and a mind that is willing to dive into stuff. They begin correcting them when they are in it. Yes. That's what happens. Yes, when we started our hub and other things, people were telling me, can we go and check out other hubs? I said, we don't need to check them. Because you will question what you're doing. First, do them. When you have succeeded at a particular level, go back to see how do you feel the things you need to feel. So, we get so scared of the, of the, of the anal analytics before we even start something. And that's what has made people who are educated in Uganda become very useless. Yes. You name them. I want you to name for me five or six who are in Uganda right now in the next generation we're having. And you see the guys who, you see who, who what, brand, white, what, the kind of guys, man, you see who are trying to be the role models of this nation. It is mind-blowing where we're heading. That's why we have artists, you know, by the time they die, the other one just goes in the barn, someone kicks you and you die, just like that. But you had a very valuable life and so many other things that you can impart to another generation. But the only thing is that you lived for yourself. <laughs> your art, your creativity served you alone. Did not serve anyone beyond yourself. Yes. It, and it, it has gone to leaders, it has gone to the young people. If you guy now wants to become a politician, every young guy wants because you want to, because it is the only source where you see to own a car and to own a house. Yes. So, young people, I want you to make sure that you can be able to understand the future. The future has shifted. The future has become digital, has been digitalized. Jobs are going to disappear like that. Airtime used to cost about 10,000 when we started. It cost about 500 shillings, and now you can even share 100 shillings with someone else. 
So it means that in the next five years, airtime is going to be free. So the companies which are making airtime are going to reinvent themselves and find another way of how to sell. So that they give you free airtime. Because WhatsApp has already disrupted you. WhatsApp is giving you a free call and it gives you a free video. So it means that WhatsApp is, has become more powerful than the mobile phone. So it means that people who are in the mobile sector have to go back and reinvent the work they're doing in the mobile sector. So, and when it comes to that reinvention, it means it needs young people like you. But young people like you have to be innovatively smart. You have to be disruptors. But the problem you do when you leave school, you see the soda on the, on, on, the, on, on, the, on the stand somewhere, you go make a soda. There is no, there is no value whatsoever in the kind of things you're trying to develop. So it is very important you develop the rightful things. I think my time. Thank you so much.